warm welcome to this special edition of To The Point coming to you from the National Stadium. Khelo India has been the buzzword this week in the sporting world. And is it the beginning of India becoming an aggressive sporting nation? Joining me now is the sports person and the sports minister, the man of the moment, Rajavadhan Singh Rathor. I welcome you on To The you. Point. Thank you so much. My first question to you, your journey five months uh, into being the sports minister, you've uh, uh, had the experience of the Under-17 World Cup, then Kalo India. Uh, has it been a good mix of international and domestic, both for you so far? I've always stated that 2018 is going to be the year of sports in India. Of course, 2017 mm. uh, was the built-up with the Under-17 and what a phenomenal uh, championship we had. The audience was larger than the World Cup in cricket. I mean, that so much is the love for sports in India. And now, of course, we have the Commonwealth Games, we have the Asian Games, and of course, Kelo India. Right. Uh, and and Kelo India is all about uh, expanding the the base of base of uh, the sporting pyramid. You know, if uh, if uh, an Olympic medal is the apex of it, then what is the base of it? The base of it has to be every child playing in every gali mohalla school every day. And that is not for winning an Olympic medal. That is for becoming a better person. So and that's what the Prime Minister feels. He right. feels that with, if we have the youngest population in the world, then that youngest population needs to be confident about their body, has to be strong with their mind, and has to be one like one team and not uh, split up between caste and creed. These uh, nani dadi tales which used to say that padhoge, likhoge, hoge, nawab, khelooge, koodooge, hoge, kharaab. I think Kelo India will break this jinx. You, had, you heard the latest one, right? Is khelooge, koodooge, to banoge, la jawab. <laughs> okay. So, what is this uh, Kelo India campaign all about, uh, Raju Vardhan? It's like, uh, uh, how do you see this campaign? So, uh, this is of course comes with the vision of the Prime Minister and like I said, he feels that we need to provide a platform to the young population mm -hmm. to be able to become better human beings, better persons. Mm -hmm. And uh, keeping that in mind, when he was the Chief Minister of Gujarat, he started Kail Mahakumbh there. Right. And I remember speaking to him earlier and uh, I started something in my constituency and a lot of other, minister, lot of other members of parliament have started sporting uh, tournaments within their constituency. Right. Now, at the level of the country, we brought in Kelo India mm -hmm. and we revamped the whole, whole scheme. It has 12 verticals. So people okay. who are watching this program, I'd love them if they go onto the Kelo India website. Okay. And by the way, it's just been about one month and more than 15 lakh people have already been on the website of Kelo India. Okay, 15 lakh people yeah. have already been there. Right. So, uh, uh, the Kelo India website gives the 12 verticals. So one of them, and which till now had not been there, is to provide our young uh, athletes a platform, okay. an aspirational platform to play. Right. So that is what is Kelo India but, school games. Right. But when you say young athletes, uh, what is the age group you're really targeting? Like Because uh, whatever we've read so far is that the school children are going to be the mainstay, the main platform, how they'll form uh, the, the important component of uh, Kelo India. But when if you have to, if you're looking at a nation which has to be aggressively a sporting nation, then why not uh, aid the developed countries like UK and US, which, which start with the sporting activities right from the infancy stage? So we have we have to target. Um, uh, so of course, sports needs to be played at all levels, at all right. ages. Uh, but where can we compete? The first competition that we brought in is at the school level, okay. which is under seventeen. Okay. The second competition we brought in at the, is at the age of under twenty-one, at the college level. Right. Then comes who are the gurus? Who are the people who are teaching them? Okay. So, th so we brought in a vertical within Kelo India, which is training the trainers. So we have we will create a program all around the country where the best where the coaches would be trained with the with the best of the coaches in the world okay. to upgrade their knowledge. Okay. Right. Then, more importantly, like you said, if children uh, at the infancy stage have to start playing, that means their mothers should have been playing sports. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, which me which means that we have. Uh, we have a vertical which is only for promoting sports amongst women. Okay. And that's precisely for this reason that you uh, you you uh, you teach sport to one generation and ten generations followed will will play sports. So these are the various verticals that we have, and of course, creating of infrastructure. And and the best part about this Kelo India is that we are we can tie up with anyone, which is a government agency, a non-government agency, schools, colleges, everyone. So you're looking at private partnerships as well. In we, this. we are absolutely open to private partnerships, and we welcome them okay. to come join us to create a movement mm -hmm. wherein better better training facilities, 
better sporting facilities are available, better competitions are available. Right. But if you go to uh, Kelo India also is about the grassroots uh, level in, uh, involvement. A lot of people at the grassroots level should come and involve themselves in sports. So how do you look at it? I mean, how does it translate really into practicality? Like, for example, a person sitting in, in some remote part of India wants to become a part of Kelo India. How does he really dream big at this point of time in, in the sporting world? So see, first most important thing is that uh, uh, sports is a state subject, right? And uh, the states are responsible for the grassroots sports and for development of the sport. Okay. Then comes the federations. The federations are responsible for governing the sport and, and investing into the grassroots as well as developing the sport and taking it to the level of excellence. The central government comes in as a supporting mechanism to all of them, right? So we are now creating, uh, we are creating benchmarks and standards for each one of them. Okay. If you see the medal tally, right. uh, and that's what we want everyone to look at the medal tally of Kelo India School Games, mm -hmm. and then let's assess which are the states that have been investing into the sports. Okay, I, I believe Haryana is is, is so, on the top. So this is a reflection of uh, which states are investing into sport, uh, and the idea is to encourage other states to come forward and invest into the uh, into their youth okay uh, similarly uh, is creation of infrastructure also as important is uh, the rural uh, sports mm -hmm. so we will in kelo india we also have a segment wherein we uh, fund indigenous sports okay. and rural sports so we so indigenous we would, sports what do you what do you uh, indigenous sports are like coco which is okay. part of the kelo india school games as well mm -hmm. uh, kabaddi is also an indigenous sport of course now it's gone to the level of the asian games mm -hmm. but we we are we are we are and will be investing into these sports as well so even the athletes who who even the, the school students who play coco for example they need to be encouraged and we will go out and support them with uh, providing all the facilities also uh, there are regional rural sports, uh, for example, uh, in Kerala you have the boat racing. Right. So the idea is not just to uh, encourage uh, Olympic sports, any sport for that matter. So boat race, the Kerala boat race also could become a part of Kelo India now? It, it is part it of Kelo India. Okay. It may not be part of Kelo India school games, but okay. it is part of Kelo India. Okay. So Kelo India has a vertical which mm -hmm. takes care of the rural sports, mm -hmm. takes care of the indigenous sports, takes care of the women's participation in sports, takes care of the development of gurus and coaches, takes care of creating a platform for college students and for school students, and takes care of creating infrastructure. During the coverage of Kelo India, I came across a lot of parents who said that, you know, uh, many private schools do not have information about these. So are we not looking at uh, partnerships with the private school as well? Is it only the government schools who've been involved in the first stage? No, absolutely not. We are going through the School Games Federation of India. The School okay. Games Federation of India, uh, 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 every school in this country, be it public or private, mm -hmm. uh, is affiliated to the School Games Federation of India. And uh, every state, when they have intra-state competitions and they develop a state team, that state team then comes and represents, uh, then competes at the national games, national okay. championships, uh, held by the School Games Federation of India. Okay. After the School Games Federation of India has had its national championships, we then take the best top eight states and top eight teams and have the Kelo India School Games. Okay. So absolutely, everybody is, uh, is welcome and, and uh, can participate in uh, these championships. See, what are we looking at? When we say that uh, uh, America has fabulous uh, Olympic teams, how do they have it? Their college games are one of the highest level college games uh, any country has. That means we need to focus on our college level games, on our school level games. And so but now... so far has not been taken very seriously. Nobody has... Uh, I think the maximum audience is there on a uh, uh, school's annual day. Right. Not beyond that. Absolutely. And as you rise higher, the audience re reduces. Mm -hmm. Now we have created a, a platform at the highest level where the, the quality of the broadcast and the athletes who are participating feel as if they are participating in a, in a world-class competition. Uh, the, uh, all the technical facilities are there. Uh, the television is covering, the, covering them. We are making heroes of our school children. Now, what will happen with this is we may not uh, right now have world-class performance, but four years from now, I can assure you 
the people who are in class 8th, 9th, 10th right now will start working hard from now on seeing that this is the place I want to be. See, every child cannot they, dream. They can dream of becoming another Raju or the Rajkar, I'm sure. More than me. <laughs> they, every child cannot dream of going to the Olympics. But every child will dream of playing at Kelo India. They do not have the stress of jobs at this point of time. So, And their parents would allow them that, okay, one hour uh, of playing time every day can get you into a Kelo India. They definitely India. would not have the stress of jobs. But uh, as the present government is also working on incorporating education along with sports. Uh, do you think that Kelo India would give them enough room so that they can get away from their studies and, you know, concentrate on the game? Because this, of course, would be a big incentive for the children who would participate. The idea is to become a better human being. Okay. And uh, in life, uh, it's not always that 99.9% .9 uh, excel in life. Absolutely. People who excel in life are people who, wo uh, who know how to work in team. Uh, people who can go beyond the task assigned to them. Uh, people who can uh, think out of the box and create solutions to the problems that they are facing. Where do the people who don't give up, even despite losses, they do not give up and come back stronger. Where do you learn these, uh, these traits? You, the, the, the maximum amount of, amount of learning of such traits happens on a on playing the field. field. Every half an hour, one hour, uh, there are many moments of ups and downs, of losses and wins. How do you remain balanced in that? How do you work with a team? How do you allow somebody else to score a goal having worked all the way from the other side and presented Absolutely. the ball to him? This is where you learn. And this is, that, this is why sports, we are saying, sports is an important part of development along with education. We are not saying that sports needs to be higher than education. We are saying, as our advertisement says, ki, <laughs> Let's mix sports in right. education right. and become a better person. Uh, but uh, Rajavatan, you were talking about the high quality standards uh, when you uh, unveil the entire plan. Now, is there a body which is really going to be monitoring the quality? Uh, because when benchmarks are set, uh, set, of course, you look at the quality standards. Who's really going to monitor? So is there a body, is there a specific body which is really going to look into the monitoring process? So we have about four and a half thousand athletes right now. Okay. Right. And uh, from them, we are going to choose nearly about a thousand athletes. And, we and will this is per year? Per year, every okay. year. Okay. But uh, before I speak about the scholarship part, I'll tell you what you asked me is every year we award uh, awards to Arjuna awardees okay. and Dronacharya awardees, uh -huh. right? We have got the best of the Arjuna awardees and Dronacharya awardees here and we have created three levels of selection panels. Okay. And these selection panels are in every stadium, in every ground, looking at this young talent and picking up the best potential out of them. Okay. So this is our selection mechanism. So yes, you need a, a very strict monitoring system. You need, and in that monitor, monitoring system is constant selection of who's, who's doing the best. So we will have our Arjuna awardees and Dronacharya awardees and Olympic Olympians picking up the best talent. Okay. Thereafter comes an IT-based structure which is going to monitor regularly all those that we've selected. So first of all, all the athletes who are here, their names, their names of their coaches, their age and everything is going to go into a database. Okay. Right? So it's forever there with us. Later in life, when somebody wins an Olympic medal out of them, we'll show them the clippings. So the of how, of the we'll show them get. the clippings of how they played when they were 17 years old. <laughs> right? Uh, we, we also have data of their coaches. So we will monitor their progress. So there is a system being set in place. Okay. And this is a professional system being set in place, which is constantly going to monitor uh, a, a, every monthly, perhaps, as to what, are they, what have they been eating, how they've been exercising, what is the level of performance, which training academy have they been going to. We will fund that training academy of those 1,000 athletes. And uh, every year, we will add 1,000 athletes to our... Uh, uh, our, our, uh, our strength, our bench strength. So it definitely sounds like a big game-changing idea in the sporting world. Never before India has done done a thing like this. Can I can I say that? Yes, it's this is this is historic uh, and uh, this is a new uh, new direction that India has taken into uh, very uh, systemic and organized uh, uh, move to broad base the sport. Right. Uh, and then uh, this, this secondary aspect of it is, it is going to be that 
somebody is going to excel in it. But uh, Akelo India's prime objective is that let everyone play. Uh, idea is to play. But uh, as you said that many streams of uh, the sporting world would be harnessed and for example say archery that is one of India's biggest uh, strengths. So how do you harness these, uh, uh, these sports? Say for example archery, is it going to go the same way or you're going to pay special attention to certain sports? Is it going to be that way? At the level of the, uh, the school games, uh, all the school games that have been selected, our attention is going to be same on all of them. Okay. Uh, in fact, we also have indigenous sports in Kelo India school games. Right. So we have Coco as well, okay. which is not an Olympic event, mm -hmm. but we will pay attention to that as well. Okay. Uh, look for the same reason that I said the idea is to broad-based sports, let everyone play. But at some point of time, when we see excellence coming in, uh, for the target Olympic podium, which is a separate uh, program than the uh, Kelo India, mm -hmm. uh, target Olympic podium, like the name suggests, it's for picking up people who are going to be on the podium at the Olympics. So there, of course, we are going to be uh, choosy about which sports, where we have a potential, and then we will invest into it. Okay, but this is this is just a beginning, and of course, the, it will take time for uh, things to pan out successfully. But the, then again, 2018 is a year where you're going to have Asian Games, you have Commonwealth Games. So are you looking at some kind of an improved tally in these games, or you would want to miss, uh, maybe look at the next term, where you, you could see, be really in a position to say that India will do better? You see... Uh, you know, we've always spoken about catch them young, right? Uh, we are converting uh, that phrase into action. Okay. Now, when you sow a seed, it takes time to grow. And therefore, like uh, we mentioned the opening ceremony, our prime objective is everyone needs to play. And, uh, and, and by that, we mean that every Indian child needs to be mentally and physically strong. The number two objective of that is uh, we are targeting 2024 and 2028 Olympics. Okay. So obviously we need some time in which these kids will, will grow up into men and women and strong ones and compete at the world level. And we will give them all that is required to excel. But having said that, we also have a separate program which is target Olympic podium. And for the first time again, uh, of course, wherever they want to train, whichever country, under whichever coach, uh, we've, uh, we've done away with all the red tapism and the movement of files in the ministries. It's straight one-to-one -one with the athletes. So if a and person sitting in some remote uh, village wants to get coached under an international coach, he's free to do that? He will have the systems all smoothly running out for him? If he has already excelled okay. and, and come into the target Olympic podium category. So in the target Olympic podium category, we, as on date, we have about 180 athletes of our country. Okay. And what we have specially done for them now, of course, like I said, we've cut out the red tapism and it's one-to-one -one and immediately their programs are sanctioned. They are training under the best coaches in the world, best facilities. Uh, we also have sports science attached to them. But we've gone a step ahead. Uh, things... Because I know as an athlete, there were expenditures happening which weren't covered under the training program. So okay. the government wouldn't fund that, uh, that expenditure of yours. So we've now come up with uh, a pocket allowance okay. of 50,000 rupees okay. to each of these 180 athletes okay. uh, in which they are free to use this 50,000 rupees per month. For the way they, the way no not okay. for the nutrition. Nutrition is a separate funded program. So okay. we fund for the nutrition. Okay. This is for so any. Fifty thousand is for their own individual any, expenses. Any individual expenses, miscellaneous expenses uh, that they keep having. It's it's because they are each moment of their life they are spending towards excellence in sports and playing for the national flag. So we've given them fifty thousand per month till the time they are uh, they are part of the training the, the, the target Olympic podium program. Okay, but this year's budget has also allocated huge uh, sum towards uh, the sport. So does Kelo India make an important component, or you have uh, other streams also which have been directed to other maybe sporting fields? So uh, before I speak about the budget, I'll tell you what's the difference, uh, especially with all the other schemes that, that existed till now. So we had. Uh, uh, Paika scheme earlier, we had uh, Rajiv Gandhi Khel Abhiyan earlier, uh, we had urban infrastructure scheme earlier. Uh, what Kelo India does is it allows, so firstly, it invests into the infra soft infrastructure. Okay. Right? So not just creating stadiums and thereafter nothing. 
it invests into these kids, right? How to how to make them give them a level of competition where where they where it's aspirational, where they would want to say, I want to play here. Number one. Number two, it 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 looks after their coaches, right, and trains them to be better coaches. So this is and then sponsorship. You see, till now, uh, sponsorship uh, has been a huge they, problem. They are in class 11th and 12th, right. right? At this age, their parents know that the child or, or their teachers know that the child is great, but they have no sponsorship, mm. right? The sponsors will only come if you won an Olympic medal. Yeah. So we are coming up with the, this gap between potential and podium. Mm -hmm. So we cover that gap. Okay. And so we've covered from the villages right up to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So that's what is great about Kilo India. But now coming on the budget, we have, uh, of course... Uh, this was a regular complaint that not much money is going into the sporting activities. This used to be a regular complaint. You, 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 have you seen me complaining no, till no, now? No, not you. I'm saying this the, used to the, be the, a norm. The, there is <laughs> enough money. And this is one of the things I've stated earlier. There is, as a sportsman, we used to always hear that uh, there is no money. You're so sorry. You've grown up with that. We've we grown, we grown up hearing that. <laughs> but I can assure all the athletes there's no dearth of money. Mm -hmm. And the money, and there's no dearth of money because each penny is going to be used for the athletes, uh, uh, precisely for them. And so, so there's. Our no children are going to be a happier lot. <laughs> so we have 520 crores now for this new this budget for 2018 19 for Kilo India, right. uh, which is good for us. Uh, uh, we have. Uh, the budget for the other uh, sporting events, which is for long-term training development program, which is for Ministry of Sports, we have enough money for that. Mm -hmm. We also have, and especially now that you're, you have so many people watching, we also have something called National Sports Development Fund. Okay. NSDF, National Sports Development Fund. This is a fund of Government of India, where it's very interesting. Anyone who puts money into that, the Government of India is duty-bound to put equal amount of money into it. Okay. Right? So if we have somebody who donates one crore, the Ministry of Finance will have to pitch in with one crore. So this is the best fund. And uh, the, all the Olympic athletes are trained by this fund. So this is an important fund. So all the PSUs and all the, can, all the corporates who are listening to this yeah. must fund. And they can actually say that where they want the money to be spent. It will be a part of this CSR activity they also. Can, they can actually state in that letter. <laughs> They can state in that letter that uh, where they want the money to be spent. For example, somebody can uh, give a certain amount of money and say it will only be used for hockey. Mm -hmm. So we'll use it for hockey or it says only be used for hockey in, let's say, uh, Punjab or Haryana. So we'll use it specifically for that. It's a very customized thing and it's, it's very nice. So uh, overall, uh, I have a sense of great confidence uh, in the youth of the country. And uh, I'm grateful that we have the support of the Prime Minister of India because uh, I mean, uh, with his support, we get the bandwidth to open up our arms and go full steam ahead. Absolutely. So this perception that India has been a, a nation of watchers and now it's going to become a nation of sports persons. It needs everyone. <laughs> so uh, the, there are, there are uh, like I said earlier, uh, there are few, few people who will have to step down and there are few people we, who will step up. The people who will step down from being the VIPs are going to be the sports federation people, the sports ministry officials, um, and some of the officials who accompany. The people who are going to step up are going to be the sportsmen first, the coaches, and the audience. So the people who watch are important as well. <laughs> okay. So pleasure talking to you, Rajivadan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. So that's it on this episode of To The Point. See you next time with another personality. Goodbye and thanks for watching.